All right, so starting from this week, uh, we will move on to our second section of this class. So we will talk about the flow control. Uh, so today we will talk about the if statement. Uh, we have already uh, learned those basic data types. So we talked about a string and also numbers, so like integer and also float. So today we will talk about Boolean data. So Boolean data is a is another special data type. So there are only two values, true and also false. Um, and also we will talk about the non-data. That is another data, uh, special data type. And there's just one value, which is actually means that nothing there. Uh, so those are two uh, special data types that we will talk today. Uh, we also have talked about those data containers uh, like variables, list, uh, dictionary, tuple, and also set. So those are the uh, most commonly used data containers in Python. And also in other programming languages, uh, you may, they may also have the similar uh, data types and also similar data containers. OK, so before we move on to this week's uh, topic, so I want to share this paragraph that called the, the Zen of the Python. So what are considered uh, the good or the best practice of using a Python? So for example, the simple is better than complicated. OK, so if you can write a simple Python code, a simple function, it is easier than um, a complicated uh, a Python function or code. And also readability it counts. OK, so when we write Python code, make sure that not only uh, the interpreter can understand your code, but, but also it is also easier for other person, people can understand your code. OK, so never ignore the errors uh, and also make sure you handle other errors uh, appropriately. Uh, in your Python. Um, better now is better than never. And also, never is often better than right now. Also, never is often better than right now. So I think this is also very interesting. So as we said, you don't have to learn everything to start creating uh, um, your code or program. So the best practice to learn the programming is to create something. However, so uh, you still need to do some uh, create your mental map before you implement your code. So uh, do not just randomly type some code uh, in the editor. Um, and also, I really also like this sentence so that there should be one way and also probably the only one way and also only the obvious way to do that. So that is what we call it a uh, Python link. OK, so let's uh, go to our editor and also go to our local um, repository. And let's get pool. So make sure that we are using the updated. So make sure that we update our local repository. And let's create a new uh, Python file. So this is lecture 5py Okay, uh, so let's lecture five if statement. Okay, so let's try to import this. So we will talk. We will talk about import later. Um, basically, this will allow us to import the other Python code or the Python modules or the Python libraries. So let's run it, and uh, you can see in the output that is the Zen of the Python. So. Um, Please spend a few minutes to read this entire paragraph and see um, how do you want, how do you how did you understand this the Zen of the Python? Okay, so let's continue. So, uh, and we may have already mentioned this one, but the the white spacing are normally ignored in parentheses or bracket. So, for example, when you def when you see print one plus two. Or one plus one, and uh, or one plus two. Uh, it doesn't matter that how many space you put in those premises. And when you, if you remember that when we designed those um, 
nested list. So one, two, three. Okay. So to make it easier to understand. Okay. So I put that into separate um, lines. So in that case, those white spaces are ignored. Are ignored. So that is a a a, a best the best practice that to make your code to be more readable so that you can use more spaces um, uh, so that uh, because all those white space are ignored in in Python so you can use those spaces uh, or divide your code into multiple lines if your code is very long so that easier for human to understand and also sometimes you can also use backslash uh, to indicate that a statement will continue to the next line so and this is also very helpful. So if you have a very long calculation, so for example, if you're doing something one plus two plus three, okay, if that is very very long, and uh, if you want to put that one into one page, you don't need to you know move around. Uh, you can add a backslash like this, and you can continue the other calculations uh, here, okay. So that will make your code more readable. Okay, so let's try something here. So, uh, for example, if we see print one plus, and if we use type white space two, uh, it will print three. And here, see if you um, uh, create a list. Let's see one, two, three, comma. Uh, five, six, seven. Okay, when you write, you can see uh, Python will ignore those uh, white spaces. And uh, similarly, so if you define like the m equals one backslash uh, plus one, and now if you print the m variable, you can see that Python will combine those two lines as a single one. OK, so that is something that you can use um, uh, in your code if your code is very, very long or, or if the structure of the data container uh, is a little bit complicated. So you can use a white spacing and also the, uh, the backslash. OK, uh, is operator. So is operator is also an interesting operator. So uh, remember that in Python, all the values and also data containers are objects. So that means that uh, when, so like when we have those objects like so, l string A and also one, two, three, that is an integer. So they have a kind of the identity. And this ID function, so that is a building function, will tell you those identity of those objects. So for example, if you put this string A into ID, Okay, they will tell you okay, so ID is uh, so that normally is a very very long a long number. And then and also if you put uh, the integer uh, into this ID function and it will also retain a very long number, so with which is the identity of those objects in Python. And is object is operator is the one that is used to compare those IDs of those two objects. So um, for example, that um, in some cases, the two variables may have the same value, but they belong to different ID, be belong to different objects, and they have different IDs. So in that case, uh, so we can compare whether or not two objects have the same ID. And this double equation operator compares the values of those two objects. OK, so let's see one example in our editor. OK, uh, so let's comment out. So let's say we define A equals a list. And also B equals another list. OK, so now we have a list, which is a data container that has an ID. A is a variable that refers to this list. And A also has an ID. And also B also has an ID. An ID. So let's print. Um, uh, the ID of the list and also let's also print the ID of the variable A and also variable B okay so variable 
a and also a uh, variable b. Okay, so now let's see do they, do they have the same ID or not? And you can see it they, they have different ID. Okay, so they may sound interesting, but in Python they are uh, actually different objects objects because they have different IDs. And now I think it will make sense. So if you say does A equals to B? And the answer will be yes, because A and B all refer to the same list which have the same values. However, if you're asking so is A um is A B okay so are the uh, a and B the same have the same IDs and the answer will be false because they they do have different IDs although they have the same values okay so that is an is operator